Signaling and signaling games, and the big question is what maintains uh, honesty in uh, animal communication. And usually, in these lectures, I start with a uh, picture of a peacock, and, and unfortunately, uh, this is this is your uh, peacock picture. And usually, start with an introduction with very famous people making uh, big claims. And, uh, and I decided to switch the order, so the introduction will be at the end of the lecture. And the reason is that it's very easy to get lost in the inter in, in this introduction, who made what claims and, and uh, the interpretations of this claim. So uh, instead of diving in the, in the introduction and, uh, and, the, uh, and uh, what, what claims, who, who did what claims, I'd like to dive into the details, into the technical details, because I assume that right now you are fresh, in both in spirit and mind, and uh, there's a higher chance that you will uh, acknowledge these uh, technical details. So you, let's start with a with a signaling game, and uh, and basically the cost-benefit structure of the signaling game, because this is this is the the uh, heart and soul of the lecture. So usually a signaling game is described with the benefit and the cost function. I, I'm, do I have a pointer? Yes, that's one. Yeah. And then uh, on the which way? Yes. Yeah. So usually there's a benefit function and there's a cost function. So think of a signaling game, for example, chicks are begging for food from their parents, and the food is the benefit. So the amount, the, the higher the amount of food, the higher the benefit they, they enjoy. And the cost is the assumption that uh, begging is a, a costly activity. So this is a signal intensity on the X. And uh, uh, the higher the intensity of the signal, the more uh, the cost they should pay. And usually this is investigated as an optimization problem, so you want to find the, the, the optimum signal intensity, which gives you the highest benefit per cost. So basically, where this distance between the benefit and the cost function is, is the largest. This will be the, the optimum uh, intensity, signal intensity for the signal. In this situation, this, this uh, blue line is basically the inverted cost function, so it's easier to visualize uh, how to find this uh, optimum. And this is a very famous figure, actually. This is from Johnston, uh, 1997, and uh, you can see this figure everywhere, basically in all the textbooks and Wikipedia and so on and so on. And uh, what you can see on this figure is not just uh, the cost function and the benefit function, but you can see the so-called equilibrium cost. So, Let's suppose that this is the signal intensity the individual gives at the equilibrium, and then this cost, this cost, this uh, green line will be the the cost that he is paying at the equilibrium for the signal, right? So this is the equilibrium. If you have any questions about anything, please ask. It's better if you ask right now than if you move on with something that you don't. Uh, understand and don't exactly understand. So please, please ask uh, questions. <coughs> and uh, and the other important uh, uh, idea is uh, what's the cost of deviating from the equilibrium? 
So suppose that this is the equilibrium signal intensity, uh, the signaler uh, deviates to this intensity, so this is the deviation. And you can see this is the amount of cost that he has to play on top of the, the cost that he already played, and usually this is called the marginal cost. So there's, there's, uh, this is important because in these discussions there are many uh, mentioning of cost and unfortunately not, not everyone is very precise what kind of cost actually is meant when uh, claims are made or, or claims are uh, so to speak falsified. So there's a cost function, there's an equilibrium cost that the individual pays at the equilibrium there's the marginal cost that the individual pays if he wants to switch to, to a different signal. Of course, the individual can switch to this region and then he will pay less for the signal, right? So it depends on where, in which direction the deviation is from the equilibrium. Now, this is some, may seem to be complicated, but, but this is the simplest uh, example. And uh, we are moving to even more, more uh, complicated examples. This is, this is the simplest case because in this situation the cost and benefit function is a, a additive. So basically you have a benefit minus the cost function. So uh, these are two additive functions. But uh, not all benefits or not, especially in biology, fitness is not additive. So we have to take a look at the um, multiplicative function. So what, what happens when, when these two functions are not additive but uh, multiplicative? In case, of multiplicative, in case of additive function, you are maximizing the difference. So this is uh, in one dimension, right? So you want to see the spot when the difference between the cost and the benefit is the largest. In case of a multiplicative function, when you have two variables, they're basically maximizing the, maximizing the area of, of this rectangle. So the larger the area is the better. Uh, in case, probably the most obvious example and the most relevant in biology, if this is a reproduction, so one dimension is a reproduction, the other dimension is a survival. And then it's very obvious that uh, uh, it's not enough to maximize either this dimension or that dimension, because if the other dimension is zero, then you, you are not having any fitness. So if you have infinite survival, but you never re reproduce, then you don't, don't have offspring, you, your fitness is zero. If your reproduction capability is very large, but you are not surviving until reproduction, then again, you are, your fitness will be zero. So it's important to keep in mind that basically in this situation there's strictly speaking there's no cost function because reproduction is not a cost function and survival is not a cost function either. So in this additive situation it was possible to split up fitness into cost and benefit, right? In the multiplicative case, it's, it's not possible because none of these functions is a cost function. Both have to be greater than zero in order to, uh, to, to the organism have a fitness, right? So, so you can't say that, oh, this is the cost function or, or, or this, one, and this one is the cost function. What you can say or what usually you can claim in this multiplicative case that uh, you can have a um, marginal cost. So if you are here and you are moving here, then of course the, the, uh, the area of the rectangle will be changed by this red one. This, this, one be, this area will be lost. And this blue area will be gained, right? So whether you are better off at this old position, then the old position basically depends on which one is larger. Right? 
if, if the uh, red one is larger than the blue one, then overall you have lost fitness. So your fitness is smaller at this position than, than at this position. So you can say that there's a marginal cost of moving from this position to this position, but this is not, this is not an um, absolute cost. This is not cost in a sense that we usually use cost in our everyday life when we go to a shop and we <coughs> buy a bread or milk or something and we pay with money. So this is not that type of cost. So you can call it cost, if in reality it's a marginal cost and it's a different cost that we use the term in our, our everyday life, right? And. Uh, and then, uh, basically, you can ask the question that why I'm here, so uh, uh, when, 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 when will I start talking about um, honesty and honest signaling? <laughs> and, uh, alright, so let's, let's, uh, let's start with that. And this is a, obviously a very simplistic case, a very, it's a simplification that you have a peacock, or basically any animal. <laughs> And let's suppose that these animals uh, can be different. So there's a trait uh, or, or an un unobservable quality of the individual that is important to know. For example, if the female wants to mate with the males, the female may be interested in the quality of the male, whether it's a high quality male or whether the male has so-called so good genes or, or bad genes. But obviously you cannot see the genes, right? It's impossible for naked eyes to see that all this guy has a very good gene. So we have, a, we have a quality which is not observable by the naked eye, and we have traits which are observable. So the question is that what would be an honest equilibrium? So how would an honest equilibrium would look like? So let's suppose that you have two uh, quality, a low quality and a high quality. You have two traits, a so-called low-intensity low trait and a high-intensity trait. You can create all, all the combinations, right? So you can have the low-quality guy have the low-intensity trait, the low-quality guy have the high-intensity, and so on. Now, at the honest equilibrium, uh, the assumption is that from, from the trait, you should be able to tell the quality. That's the definition of honesty. So there's a correlation between the observable trait and the unobservable quality, which means that we really don't need these, these guys. So we don't need this one and we don't need this one. So at the honest equilibrium, we want the low quality individuals display the low intensity signal, and the high quality individuals display the high intensity signal. So somehow we have to prevent the low quality individuals using the high intensity signal. So this is usually called the cheating, the cheaters. So how do you prevent uh, low quality guys pretending to be uh, high quality guys with, with high intensity signal? So how do we, how do we uh, prevent this is to, to happen. And the answer is very simple, and this is where uh, I, I hope that uh, what I started with would make sense. So, the way to, to prevent, so let's say this is the low intensity guy um, with the low intensity trait. And this is the optimal trait size for the low, <coughs> low intensity guy. Again, you can think of it as a survival and a reproduction. And this, is, this, is, this curve shows the size of the trait. So this is the increasing size. So this is a, a very high, high survival, but no reproduction. And as you increase the trait, the survival will decrease someone and uh, your uh, reproduction potential will be increasing. And this will be the optimum size. Now, uh, what, what would prevent this guy from switching to this, this size to a, a larger size? So basically what we want to prevent is uh, that uh, it should not be worse 
for this individual deviating from this signal intensity, switching to a larger signal intensity. And obviously what would prevent it if, the mo if basically the marginal loss of fitness, this blue area that he is losing, right, when switching to this new signal intensity, is larger than the marginal gain, larger than that he gains from switching, right? So basically we can, we can see that um, obviously the example is picked in a way that uh, this is larger. So this, this will uh, prevent the low intensity guy switching for to, from the low intensity signal to the high intensity signal. So basically the marginal cost of switching should be higher for the low intensity guy than the marginal gain of switching. Now, obviously we want to have the high intensity guys to use the high intensity signal. So if we said that it's not, uh, not worth switching from this position to this position, then how, how this guy will solve the problem? What's the solution? And the solution that he's not moving on the same curve. So the solution that probably he has, he has a curve like this one. So uh, he is not moving in this curve, which the optimum is here, but he is moving on this larger curve, where the optimum is here. So basically, this means that they are facing different trade-offs. So uh, we can call it condition-dependent trade-offs. So the trade-off that the low-quality guy is facing is different from the trade-off than the high-quality guy is facing. So suppose that you have 500 farins. You, you want to buy a, a sandwich or a beer. And both the sandwich cost 500 farins and the beer. Then you have to choose, right? You have to choose whether I buy the sandwich or the beer. But if I don't have uh, my, my money in the pocket, it's not 500 farin, but 5,000, then I can buy both, right? In fact, I can buy uh, five sandwich and five beers or nine sandwich and, and one, so on. So obviously I can, I, I can buy a lot more. So, so the idea is that the high quality guys are not moving on the same trade-off curves as the low quality guys. They have a different trade-off. And that's why for the high quality guy, a much higher intensity signal will be the, will be the optimum, right? So, uh, basically, uh, and this means that uh, if, if we are here for the high quality guy and he's switching from this low intensity signal to the high intensity signal, then for the high quality guy, the, the marginal, marginal gain of switching will be larger than the marginal loss. So for the high quality guy, the area that he lost, that he is losing when he is switching to this new uh, signal intensity, is smaller than the area that he is winning by the switch. So basically, for the high quality guy, the marginal gain is larger than the marginal cost of switching. Low quality guy, the, the opposite direction, the marginal cost should be higher than the marginal gain for the high quality guy. So we can see from these simple examples, and yes, that uh, uh, we can have, see five conclusions. So the low and the high quality signals are moving on different trade-off curves. So they, they, they are not facing the same trade-off. For the low quality signal, the marginal loss is higher than the marginal gain. The high quality signal, the marginal gain should be higher than the marginal loss. Actually, the high-quality signaler can be better off in terms of both, direct, both dimensions. So the high-quality signaler can have higher survival and higher reproductive success than, than the low-quality guy. And, uh, and, and uh, yes, obviously, they also enjoy higher uh, fitness when they are switching to this new equilibrium. Now, uh, I hope this is clear uh, so far because this is not we have done in, in the paper. This is this is still still the introduction uh, part, and and in the paper that we have published uh, not uh, not very long time ago in the BMC, uh, 
biology. Uh, three co-authors, Ishtar Zaha, Daniel Seger, uh, and uh, Dustin Penn. Uh, we have uh, investigated a general signaling game and uh, we, we calculated a general solution to this signaling game. So, uh, in order to understand that what, what is this solution, uh, we have to understand that uh, this, this looks fine and this, uh, this is fine, but this is basically the, just the problem from the, from the uh, point of view of the signaler. So the point of view of the individual who is giving the signal and asking for the result. For example, a pair of offspring communication, the chick is asking for the food. Or in the mate choice situation, the male is giving the signal to the female and, and asking the mating opportunity from the female. So this is from the from the point of view of the of the of the player who gives the signal. But the signaling game by definition has two players. So there's a, there's a signaler and there's a receiver. So there's another player in the game. And uh, and uh, this means that the 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 optimal shared resource from the point of view of the receiver and the signaler need not be the same. So for example, a chick may ask for more food than the parents would be willing to give if the parents would know the exact state of the chick. Or the male would like to ask for more mating opportunities than the female would be willing to give if the female would know the exact quality of the male, right? So this is called conflict of interest. So there may be a conflict of interest in the amount of shared resource that the signaler would like to ask for and the uh, receiver would be willing to give if she would know the exact quality of, uh, of the signaler. So the usual uh, way to solve these signaling games is to ask what function or what transformation can move the fitness of the signaler in a way that the signaler's optimum is, will be at the same position as the receiver's optimum. So it's not just uh, the task of a signaling game is not just finding the signaler's optimum because uh, then you are not solving the signal game because the signaler's optimum need not be the same as the receiver's optimum. And if, if the signaler is asking for more than the receiver is willing to give, then, then the solution is not stable. So basically, the idea is the evolutionary stable uh, strategy. And, and, the, uh, and uh, the idea if uh, every individual in the population is playing this uh, so-called evolutionary stable strategy, then uh, no mutant strategy can invade. So basically, which means that uh, it, it's not worth deviating from this, uh, from this evolution stable strategy. But if, if, the, the signal, if the signaler optimum is at a different position, then for the signaler it worth deviating because he wants to ask more. Or, or, or the receiver wants to give, give less. So basically, uh, the task in this, uh, in this case, in, uh, the, the way to solve a signaling game, is to find a solution to this problem. So how to move, how to transform the signaler's fitness in a way that the optimum of the signaler will be at the same position and the optimum for the receiver because this will be the stable solution, the evolutionary stable solution. This means, this position means, that the signaler will be asking for exactly the amount that the receiver is willing to give. The receiver will know the quality of the signaler, so this is an honest equilibrium. So by assumption, at the honest equilibrium, the receiver can tell uh, this uh, unobservable quality of the signaler from the observable trait. And then the receiver uh, 
will implement her equilibrium, but it will be stable because the, 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 the signaler is asking exactly the amount that, that the uh, receiver is willing to give. <laughs> this is a crucial step and again if there's any any questions then please ask. Basically the idea is to find a function. So we have to find a function which will move these dotted uh, fitness uh, uh, curve into this position. So how does this function uh, look like? Yeah. Why do you move only the signal as function? Uh, this is a good question because the, uh, this is all started, uh, uh, this is where the interaction is missing, <laughs> but we will, we, will get to the, <laughs> we will get to the, because it's all started out as the so-called costly signaling or, or handicap principle, which assume that this uh, uh, transformation is basically the so-called based for signal cost or the cost cost function. So this, this was the assumption that this transformation is a cost function and this cost function will move the, the signaler's fitness curve into a position that will align the signaler's optimum with, with the receiver's optimum. And, and again in this situation you can have a so-called additive uh, fitness models, or multiplicative models, these are real models, so these are not freehand uh, pictures. This is the model of Godfrey in, in the nature 1991. And this is, uh, this is Grafen's uh, famous model, the 1990 uh, model. And again, uh, the additive case, you have a benefit function, and we call this function a, a transform, trade-off function, not a cost function. And we call this trade-off function because it, it need not imply a cost at the equilibrium. So I, I, we, we think that this is a more general formulation of, of the idea. And again, this trade-off function it can, be, can work either in an additive or a multiplicative uh, way. So basically the idea is that, uh, for example, in this additive situation you have the the receiver's optima, and you have the benefit function, which is without the trade-off function is the signaler optima. So we have to move this green dot into 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 the same position. So we are, basically we are moving this by uh, adding this uh, trade-off function. So adding the uh, green and the red, and by adding the up the green and the red, B and plus T, we will end up in this uh, new uh, blue curve, and the optimum of this blue curve will be at the same position as the optimum of, of the orange curve. So we are transforming this blue curve with the use of, of this red one, right? And, and uh, at, at the end of the transformation, the two optima will, will be aligned. And basically it's the same idea in the multiplicative case. We have this uh, orange curve, which is the optima of the receiver, the female. We have the green curve, which is the optima of the male. So you can see that there, there's no maximum position. So the males uh, want to ask for more and more meeting opportunities. And then we have this trade-off function, just in case the trade-off is not an additive. We are not adding up the two functions, but it's multiplicative. And because it's multiplicative, it, it, it looks a bit, uh, bit uh, funny. Uh, but, but the idea is that there's, a, there's an optima at the same position as, as, the, as the female. Now the, the question is, how do you find this function. So how do you find this trade of function? And uh, this is not an easy, easy uh, solution to solve. And uh, traditionally this function were, find, were found in a kind of an in, in, in intuitive way. So whether you had an intuition then this, this type of function will, will do what I, what I want to do. So uh, we will return to Grafen model in, in the introduction, which, which is coming. 
Uh, and and uh, graphene models is famously difficult to understand. So graphene himself told me, I had, uh, had a chance to listen to graphene almost 10 year, year, years ago. Graphene told that he believed that uh, at the time when he published the model, there was five people in the entire Earth who understood the model. I think it was a very generous overestimation because I think nobody, nobody understood the model. But it, it's a difficult to solve solution. So what we did in this paper is basically to uh, to uh, reverse engineer this uh, class of uh, solutions with, with a technique called the Taylor S series uh, ex expansion. This is a very old technique in mathematics and physics, but as far as uh, we are aware, no one used this Taylor series expansion in this way, so to, no one used it to reverse engineer. So basically we can reverse engineer because we know what's the end position that we would like to get, right? So. We know that we, we, we want a fitness uh, function or a fitness landscape where, where the two optima is at the same position. And we know where we start from, so we, we, we can calculate that one, what will be the, the most general class of transformation which, with which you can achieve this, this effect. So it's a, it's a bit uh, technical and uh, and and I decided not to go not to go into the details, but basically the idea is the same that with the, with the function b, so with the benefit function, you can write out this uh, trade-off function, and this is the the zero der derivative, the first derivative, the second der derivative, and you may recognize this term from the, the Taylor series. Uh, e e expansion. So, in for the uh, additive case, the first uh, uh, part, the zero derivative, gives the so-called equilibrium cost. So this gives this gives the cost that the individual, the signaler, will pay at the equilibrium. The second part is the so-called equilibrium cost. This is basically gives uh, where, where, what's the optimal shared resource for a, a signal with a given quality. So as a, as a function of, uh, of the quality, who, who is the quality, what, what's the optimal. And, uh, and this uh, uh, second part is, is the stability condition. So basically, uh, this, this is the part when, when, when we make sure that this curve is, is this way, so pointing downwards and not, not, not uh, pointing, pointing up, up, upward. And, uh, and we can write up a very similar function for the multiplicative case. It's a bit, bit more complicated than the additive case, but, but, but the idea is basically the same. So, Using this uh, so-called Taylor series expansion, you can find the first derivative. So the, basically, the, these are the two two important terms: the the so-called equilibrium equilibrium pass, because this this equilibrium pass gives gives this position, so gives the position uh, for the optima. And again, the the second important point is the stability condition, and. Uh, and basically, basically that's it. And uh, and the important thing is that in the additive situation, you can see that these these terms are independent from each other. So uh, function b is not in in this term. So basically, you can pick any any function for the first one. So you can uh, this so-called equilibrium cost function could be uh, an increasing function, a decreasing function, it can be even a, a sorry, can be a 
sigmoid function. So you can pick any, uh, really any function for this. So the, the equilibrium cross can, of course you can pick zero if you want. So the equilibrium cross can be zero. You may ask what's the meaning of a negative uh, equilibrium cost. So what, what, how do you interpret the cost which is not positive but negative? The, the meaning of a negative cost is that this uh, trade has other benefit which is independent from the signaling um, interaction. So basically you are using your trade as a signal which has some other function and you gain a benefit through, the, uh, through that other function. So this, this could be an interpretation of this negative curve. But the idea is that the two is in the independent. So basically the, the, the stability of the honest signaling uh, equilibria is independent from the equilibrium cost. So therefore any theory, if there would be such theory that would claim that the equilibrium cost maintains the honesty of the signals is an incorrect theory because because that's that's basically not the case. So basically that's that's the that's the idea. And yes, uh, there's the peacock. So <laughs> so uh, what do we know know about the peacock? So this this uh, you know big trade uh, intuitively. If someone were to say that this is a costly or wasteful, this, this intuitively seems to be a plausible claim, yes? So this is a huge feather and, and everything. I'm not aware of any empirical study which would have measured that uh, uh, wasteful cost. In fact, all the studies I'm aware of shows that uh, this is basically for the high quality individuals, so for the guys, but actually uh, have these traits at the equilibrium, uh, it's not costly at all. So I know two studies first uh, measure how fast they take off from the ground. So the assumption could be that this is a very long uh, train and it could hinder the takeoff. So the guys with the longer train uh, would take off slower, but that's not the case. Actually, the guys with the longer train take, can take off faster. The other study investigated how far, uh, how fast they move on the ground. Again, the idea that this is a long, long train and, and you can't move on the ground, but that's not the case. Again, the guys with the longer longer train move 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 the fastest. Yeah, but this is the consequence of, of the trade of dimension. Yeah 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 so uh, is this there is any, the uh, ah, yeah is there any study where when you have a, a peacock originally with small tails and the tail was increased too much uh, no, no, but then, then of course, uh, uh, a peacock, peacock with small tail increased to a large tail would, would, would be this, 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 uh, this case, huh? No, but in this case, you uh, my, I mean, not, not this case, but this, uh, yeah, this case. So the low, low quality uh, individual increased the trade. And we would expect that, of course, for the low quality guy, the marginal cost, the loss of fitness would be higher than, than the, than the uh, gain, gain of fitness. But for the high quality guys, uh, they, they, they are not hindered or they are not handicapped by, by, you know, by this trade. And they need not be, um, need not be um, handicapped. So the death that's the idea. So, this, this, uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. You said that there is no cost in this there. Uh, no cost in a sense that they are not paying an absolute cost at the equilibrium. So, so again, that that uh, both both uh, dimension contributes to the fitness. So, yeah. so, but so. Still can have a cost. Huh? It's building and and varying the style. For long tails, it's kind of, kind of cost. The, for, uh, 
Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, but it's it's not really. Where is this cost? So where where are they paying this cost? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Yeah, but 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 then you mean the bill. The energetic cost, right? So that that it it it, uh, it 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 has, yeah. But that's the idea of the of this sandwich and the beer. So if 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 they have if they have the money, they can buy both, right? So so that's that. So basically, the energetic expenditure may not be translated into a fitness fitness cost right i, I understand that this is a this is a very radical claim because usually usually again that's the idea that's the idea and this is this is costly and this has to be costly but uh, my or or claim and what what the model shows and what this uh, simplistic free and lean figure shows, but the model corresponds to this that uh, for the high quality individual, there there need not be any cost. The high quality individual can be better off in in both in terms of survival, can be better off in terms of uh, meeting meeting success. So it need not handicap the high quality individual in any way. It need not be even costly in again in a sense that we use the cost so that we that we pay with a certain amount uh, of of something for something because the metabolic expenditure need not be translated into into a fitness cost. And uh, and 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 uh, what was what was this? Sorry, and and yeah. if if there is no cost for what, what? high quality, yeah. then why is there any low quality diet? So if it's not costly to being a uh, high quality, so the trade is not. No, uh, in in this model. In this model, we are not explaining what, what what's the reason between the high and the low quality guy. So we are not not explaining where does this uh, difference come from. It's the assumption of the model that there are there are differences uh, either quality and condition, and and the assumption if it's condition that some guys are just better off uh, gathering or finding food and and so on. So. But but uh, this is not something that the model is investigating. What the model is investigating is uh, the condition or, or are the conditions of the honest equilibrium. So basically the model investigates what would prevent the low quality guys uh, switching to the high intensity signal. Again, this is the important. So what basically uh, maintains honesty is that for the low quality guy, the switching should be uh, uh, costlier. So the marginal cost of switching to the high intensity signal should be higher than the marginal gain. And this is this is the important part of the story, not uh, not the cost for the for the high quality or uh, or the so-called cost because in, in my opinion uh, there need, need not be cost. Uh, again, I'm not saying that these traits uh, do not require mm, metabolic investment because obviously building any, any trait uh, requires some sort of metabolic investment. Just that it, it need not be uh, translated into fitness cost, and that high quality individuals can be better off in terms of both traits, can can have both higher survival and can have most higher uh, reproductive success at, at the equilibrium.
And then, of course, you may ask, that where, where does this peacock uh, come from? So how, how does the peacock enter the picture? Um, other than, of course, that I found a picture of the peacock and uh, copy-pasted into my presentation. That, uh, but uh, where does the importance of the peacock come from? And uh, here comes the introduction. And so this will be the easy part, I hope so. Uh, there will be no more equations and uh, optimization problems and uh, trade-offs. It will re re reveal who are this person and who are, who are these people. And probably you have no idea. It's uh, very difficult, obviously, to, to find out. Now, the importance of Pico comes from that uh, the fact that Charles Darwin, who, who is the origin who was the father of the theory of nature and selection, had a very famous quote. The sight of uh, a feather in a peacock's tail, whenever I gaze it, it makes me sick. Why, why, why so? So the, the explanation is that uh, the idea of nature and selection is that traits should help the individuals in, the, in, in survival, in their fight uh, or Battle for, for survival. And again, this long train of the peacock doesn't look like that it's helping the males to survive better. So, so Darwin had to come up with, with a different idea, and this different idea is the theory of sexual selection. Because Darwin was also the guy who proposed the theory of sexual selection, and the idea was that the the males have this very uh, big and uh, fancy train because the females prefer the males with this fancy train. So the, this train evolves because of the female preference. Now what we could not explain and what uh, uh, later the problem is that why would females prefer Yes, with, with, with such a huge shame. So where does the preference come, come from? What do females gain right? mm -hmm. by, by preferring males with, 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 with this huge uh, fancy train? And uh, then comes the second uh, reveal, and the second reveal is uh, Amor Zahavi, and he proposed a theory called the uh, Handicap Principle. Basically, he made a connection between the idea of honest signaling and the sexual selection. And he said that females should prefer these big fancy traits because these traits are costly for the male and this cost uh, will maintain the honesty of these traits. So basically he said that there's a, there's a there's a causal uh, relationship between honesty and confidence. And, and he went a bit, bit further than this, is that uh, he claimed that the handicap principle is a very simple idea that waste can make sense. So that he claimed that uh, this train is a wasteful uh, trait and by wasting a huge amount of energy and effort, the males can uh, show off that they are in good quality. So for example, if you have two people uh, running side by side, but one, one people running with a huge uh, sack of stone uh, at his shoulder carrying a, a big uh, sack of stone, then obviously we would assume that the guy who is carrying this huge uh, heavy burden is in much better condition, stronger. And so on. So basically, the peak of the train uh, in the eyes of Zahavi is just a big, big set of stones. So the males are carrying this large, heavy burden to show for the females that I'm, I'm, I'm very strong because I can carry this large burden. And, and the idea was uh, debated, debated for a long time. Zahavi was uh, never investigated a mathematical model. It was a verbal argument, purely a uh, verbal presentation, and it was debated. And some people tried to model it, and they claimed that it does not work. And then came uh, a guy, and this is the third reveal, 
uh, Alan Grafen, who published the game theoretical model. This was the game theoretical model that I mentioned before, that he said that only five people uh, understood. And uh, in his game theoretical model, he was very um, ad adamant that, in his opinion, this model supports Zawi's, uh, Zawi's idea. So he, d he derived this famous uh, so-called main handicap results that signals are honest, are costly, and costlier for what worse uh, quality uh, signaler. And since it was a, <coughs> a game theoretical model, which always has more more weight than just a verbal verbal argument, and since uh, no one else than Grafen understood the model. Therefore, uh, basically, Grafen's conclusion was um, accepted. So again, Grafen was very, very much in favor of Zahavi. Zahavi's major claims for the handicap principle are also indicated. If we see a character which does signal quality, then it must be a handicap. So he was very, very uh, straightforward, very clear to the point that he thinks that his model support. As a Hanukkah principle, and you can see from the citations. So these are the citations uh, uh, for the handicap principle over time. Uh, Zahavi published his paper in 1975. And this is 1990. The, this is the citation he received until Grafen's model. This is where Grafen published his paper. So. Uh, it's, it's important to understand the um, mathematical, even for biologists, it, yeah, I think it can be very important to understand the problem with Grafen, just to, to explain why, uh, why he, uh, that he basically uh, misinterpreted, at least in my opinion, Grafen may not agree with me, but in my opinion he misinterpreted his own model. So basically his equations, if you look at the equations, uh, show the importance of marginal cost and differential marginal cost. So signals are costly usually mean, mean, means an absolute sense. Again, that you are paying something at the equilibrium. The marginal cost is, a, is just the difference between switching between two, two signal intensity. So basically his equations were not showing what he was claiming, in, in my opinion, again here. You probably will not agree uh, with me, but the, the, again the idea that we were able to show in this, in this new paper that I just uh, introduced before, uh, we were able to show that uh, signals need not be costly at the equilibrium, <coughs> not even under conflict of interest, and actually signals at the equilibrium can be beneficial for the high quality guys. So the high quality guys can be better off in every respect than the low quality guys. What is important is the potential cost of cheating. The cost that prevents from the low quality guy switching to the high quality signal. That's the, that's the important part and not uh, the cost uh, or that, that the high quality guys paying at the equilibrium. So basically these are, these are the uh, conclusions that honesty is maintained by condition-dependent trade-offs. So the high-quality guys are not moving on the same trade-off curve um, as I showed you at, at the beginning of the lecture than the low-quality guys. The high-quality signals are not wasteful, so there's nothing wasteful in this system. High-quality signals are efficient. If you see some, someone with, uh, like this, then I would bet my bottom dollar that he, he has this large strain because he is efficient in, in producing the, the, such large, large strain. So there's no, nothing wasteful in this system. And, uh, and, uh, and I think that signaling is basically a life history trade-off. So it's, it's just as any other life history trade-off and it should be described and studied with the terminology of life history trade-offs instead of the misleading terminology of the handicap principle. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, as far as I understand, this, the, the whole model revolves around the idea that there is this trade-off between the two trades. Um, and, and you show that uh, individuals with different quality might have different uh, different curves. Yeah. But the shape of the curve remains the same. So what happens if... Yeah, uh, that, that, that was just a, a freehand. The shape of the curve need, need, not, need not be exactly the same. That was just for the easiest way to okay. copy-paste the curve. But so what happens if the, the shape of the curve is uh, fundamentally different from for different individuals? It can be different for different individuals, but, but the conclusions uh, are the same, that uh, signaling will be honest if the marginal cost is higher for the low quality guy than the marginal gain. <coughs> so basically, uh, basically, these are the important conclusions. For the low quality individual, marginal cost from switching from the low intensity to the high should be higher than the marginal gain. And for the high intensity, the marginal gain should be higher than the marginal gain. You can, you, you can imagine different uh, uh, trade-off curves with different shapes that, that would fit this foundation, right? So, so the shape, shape need, need not be the same. The important thing is that, that the a area gained by switching to the new position should be larger than the area lost by, by the same switch. Yeah? Okay. Other questions? No more questions, I still have a couple of questions. Right? Yeah, yeah, uh, please, so the, please. The, um, my other question is that uh, what do you think, what are the testable hypotheses of your model that uh, we could test like in a field condition or laboratory conditions test the critical assumptions or predictions of the model? Yeah, uh, this is a good question. Uh, obviously, fitness in itself is very difficult to measure in, in animals. It could be, could be very difficult to measure and trade-offs could be also very difficult to measure. So what we did actually, we did uh, an experiment on, on uh, humans because uh, usually there's this idea that it's difficult to experiment with humans, that, but actually it's much easier. Of course it depends on the type of the experiment, but this was a laboratory experiment when uh, people were sit uh, sitting in front of the computer. They, they were seeing uh, very similar signaling games, so uh, randomly individuals were assigned to uh, low quality and high quality conditions. There were receivers, and, uh, and then the, the people who were assigned as signalers, they could choose between different, two different signals. Uh, these signals were just signs, uh, random, random signs. And basically, we, we varied two things. We varied the, the, the so-called equilibrium signal cost. So basically, what's, what's the cost uh, for the high quality individual that they have to pay for the signal? For example, 100 uh, forint or 500 forint or 1000 forint. And we varied whether there's a trade-off. And we also varied whether it's condition dependent, so whether they are moving on the same trade-off curve or not. So basically, we, we, we generate in the system because, because it was a laboratory experiment and we were able to show that in, indeed signals were honest under the condition dependent trade-off uh, trade treatment and not, the, not under the costly equilibrium cost uh, trade-off treatment. Now, how, how to, because obviously your question would be how to translate this experiment into, into animals. And uh, to be honest, I, I only have a, a short answer at the moment. I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to translate it exactly. You would need a system where you could, um, 
manipulate the, the equilibrium cost of the signals and where you can manipulate the trade-offs. That would be the best system, if you could manipulate both. What, what is the... So we have two competing theory or hypothesis, one sandcap and yeah. one is yours. Yes, yes. And what would be the, 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 the this easy, that, that is, this easy? Precisely. Precisely, yeah. 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 Precisely, experiment. I, I, I think, I think there, there were already uh, decisive experiment made in a sense that, uh, as I said, uh, there are many, many studies that try to measure out, measure out this uh, predicted wasteful signal cost. So uh, people try to measure the, the signal cost of hugging signals. So this was a very famous uh, experiment type uh, at, at the point. Or again, trying to measure whether this peacock train is, is costly for the high quality. And, and in many experiments, uh, they did not found a, a, a waste for a, a, a large cost. So there are many signals in nature which seems to be uh, cheap, yet honest. And this is not in line with the predictions of the handicap principle, but this is in line with, with the predictions of the four model. That for the high quality, Individuals at the equilibrium, it need not be expensive. The high quality guys can get the signals cheap. They will be efficient. If, if you still increase the signal intensity for the high quality individual, you will still pay a cost. So yeah, if you, inc if, if you force the high quality individuals to give an out of yeah. equilibrium signal. So Again, the prediction of our model is what is important is this cost of uh, deviating, so this marginal cost of deviating from the equilibrium. This is the importance. So in theory, if, if you could me measure what's the, what's the marginal cost of a signal uh, deviating from the equilibrium, and what's the marginal gain, what's the marginal fitness gain, then, then the idea is that the marginal cost should be higher than the marginal fitness gain. So you should be able to measure the balls. There were some, some uh, begging experiments. Uh, Moreno Rueda, uh, the name of perhaps. Uh, so uh, they, they, they did this kind of experiments when, when they... Uh, and uh, so, for example, they tried to manipulate the cost by forcing the chicks to beg, beg for a long short period or to a long period. So some chicks beg for uh, three seconds or two seconds, and other chicks are forced to beg for 20 seconds, 30 seconds. So then, then you have a, a, a variation of, of begging length, so forcing a, a deviation uh, from the equilibrium. But but then you also have to measure what's the benefit from the food item. Then, so what's the, what's the fitness gain? And, and I'm, I'm not sure that you can measure the fitness gain of one single piece of whatever is the food item. So how, how, how do you... Because you, you usually they correlate this with, with, with size and mass. So the idea is that the larger is the chick, the more likely is the chick to survive and, and to, to get to, to adulthood. But it's still difficult to, to tell exactly the fitness gain. And the problem is that you are, and the other problem, you are not measuring the same thing because with the banging, you are measuring the energetic expenditure. So uh, I'm not aware of any study which, which, yeah. uh, correctly, which would have correctly measured both the marginal cost and the marginal gain of uh, deviating yeah. from the equilibrium. Yeah. 
and I'm still not, uh, what to say, so I think that the basic idea of Zahari is captured by this model too. So, of course, there are some adjustments and deviating from the optimal should be possible. Yeah. What you said, it's always says that sigma should be possible, but uh, I'm still, yeah, so I think it's, it's, uh, it's uh, in, in, the, in the circumstances or in the limits of, uh, of his verbal arguments, it's basically this can be the model of the supervisor too. I would disagree uh, respectfully. I would disagree because he was very clear about this wasteful. Uh, the very very name of his theory, uh, the handicap principle, comes from the idea that this has to be a sort of wasteful cost. And in my opinion, uh, there's no way. What is important is uh, deviating from the equilibrium. But then, but then, why do you call it a handicap principle? And why, why make it? Of, of course, we know why because he never, uh, he was not a modeler. So obviously that's why. But I think it's a misleading. It's not in my let's uh, put it this way. In my opinion, it's not useful to see uh, signals as as handicaps. It's more useful to investigate them in in the context of life history trade-offs because because these are life history trade-offs. So what 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 would be important in terms of experiment if you could measure out this trade-off curves uh, as a function of uh, quality of, of of individuals? So 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 the idea is again that low quality individuals moving on a different trade of curve and then then high quality individuals. Time is running quickly. So we continue the discussions at the uh, Menzo. So if you are interested in just join us for the lunch with some watch. And I can I can tell you more about trade of curves and optimization. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much.